We're just about at the end of our day's activities. Uh, it's been a long day, but my goodness, I've rarely had such an exciting day and been so challenged uh, to think about the transformations in our uh, disciplines and in our communities. Teaching, undergraduate, graduate, uh, research. And I'd like to now ask uh, our past president, and Graham Carr, who is also Vice President of Research at Concordia University, uh, to give a couple of closing remarks. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you, uh, Kevin, for a truly uh, inspiring inspiring talk. Uh, the theme of the day is transformations. I, I actually thought the single biggest transformation was how is it possible that Kevin could look so much younger than he looked in that photograph that your student dug up. So I've just been, can't get that out of my, can't get that out of my mind. Um, so the theme of the day is obviously transformations. Uh, we live in uh, critical times when uh, lots of things are happening that uh, Probably other, other points in the Federation's history, um, a day like this would have involved a lot of hand-wringing and teeth gnashing about uh, all the forces that were arrayed against us and arrayed against higher education in general. Um, I didn't feel that today at all, actually. I thought that this was an incredibly uh, positive, uh, positive day, which was not focused uh, so much on the challenges, but to pick up on one of Kevin's words on the possibilities. Uh, on the potential, uh, on the on the excitement of new directions that uh, that we could um, we could pursue together, I think there are new expectations out there. Uh, this morning, uh, Therese was talking about uh, uh, the increasing uh, desire for personalized education, and that's a reality that's coming to us. And I was thinking about that this afternoon when. Uh, when Paul and Katie and, uh, and Sydney were, were talking about the new PhD too, it seems to me that we've got to start thinking about that fin conductor between the new students who are entering undergraduate programs with very different expectations and the kinds of demands and pressures and aspirations that they're going to have when they get to graduate school to push the boundaries of the graduate edu education that we've, that we've been delivering them, uh, to them. Uh, I thought too about uh, uh, Dilip, uh, Dilip Soman's comments this morning. Uh, just, he didn't talk about it very much, but hinted about it at the at the transformative nature of of technology and the delivery of higher education in different parts of the world, in in hugely complex societies like India, for example, and the enormous possibilities that are there, and the enormous role that social science and humanities research can play in imagining pathways to deliver uh, education, to deliver literacy, numeracy, and the potential for higher education uh, in parts of the world uh, um, where the, where the learning challenges are simply fundamentally different. I think too about the, the, uh, the new audiences, and I guess this was a theme I saw this morning, the, the whole conversation around, or part of the conversation around MOOCs is about higher education reaching out to worlds of people who um, otherwise would never have the opportunity uh, to, uh, to, to study or to be part of a, of a, of a community of learning. And what Kevin was talking about just a few minutes ago, in part, was breaking those boundaries and creating different kinds of uh, communities of knowledge um, and, and, and practice. Um, I think the phrase that you used, or maybe it was borrowing from uh, Henry Jenkins, it was happening too fast for me to recall, is that we do everything in the open now. That's a huge transformation. Um, we're not, uh, we're, we aren't operating in the world that we operated in before as scholars, and we could view that as a limitation, we could view that as threatening, but again, what I'm picking up from today is the possibility of, of imagining the liberating aspects of that, the kinds of connections that can come from that transformative, transformative experience. Technology is obviously a major, uh, 
uh, transformative force in our lives. A lot of the conversation today was explicitly or implicitly about technology. Um, the, the, the power of reaching new communities instantaneously, but also the challenges of data archiving, of managing the extraordinary production of information that occurs on a daily basis, whether that's in a, in a genomics lab or whether that's uh, with people uh, uploading images to Facebook or videos, uh, uh, videos onto, you, onto, onto YouTube. One of the extraordinarily uh, complex realities of the transformative moment we live in is the sheer impossibility of information management, right? And in the past, I think one of the realities, one of the comfort zones for academics has always been the perception that we could manage information. To go back uh, to Chad's point, <coughs> experience that I certainly shared with him, that there was actually a finite amount of information you needed to know to pass those comprehensive exams many years ago or, or so it seemed. And I think too that uh, a part of the message of today is about new relationships. Really happy to see people from MyTax, really happy to see people from Genome Canada coming to a conference about the social sciences, arts and humanities. Um, and I think that that speaks to the, to the reality of multidisciplinarity, of, uh, of, of the, the intersectoral um, uh, complexity of the challenges that we're facing uh, as scholars, as academics, as a society. The, the, the paradigm shifts that are occurring, which Chad has, uh, has been drilling into our minds over the last few years, and, and how do we how do we recognize, experience, and move with that paradigm shift? But I guess the last point, or second to last point that I would take away from today is, is for all of the discussions about transformation, the discussion about transformation in part is also a discussion about preservation. It's a discussion about choosing those things that are part of our past, that are part of our heritage, that are part of our formation, that are part of our way of knowing that we want to hang on to because they are as much a part of the solution for tomorrow as new technologies, new ideas, new relationships, new partnerships. It's not an either or equation. It's a, it's a blended learning opportunity. And I think that that's a, 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 another critical f message for us. It's not the, the seduction of the new. The seduction of transformation is about the combination of past, of present, and the possibility of the future. And the last thing that I would just say is, uh, if I can uh, revert to my uh, <clears throat> former federation uh, persona, uh, it's also wonderful to see the annual conference in a place like this, uh, talking about transformation in a room which doesn't exactly resonate transformation <laughs> uh, in one of the uh, Canada's great and most historic universities where we're poised to go to one of Canada's youngest and most ambitious universities. It's a great transformative moment for the Federation to move out of Ottawa, to move into the university communities that, are, that represent the diversity of whom we are. Thank you to McGill for hosting this today. Merci, Madame Fortier, uh, pour uh, sa, uh, uh, son accueil très, très chaleureuse. Thank you, Antonia, to all the people from McGill who have helped make this uh, a very wonderful, wonderful day. And most of all, to all of you as the participants. <laughs>